What's up, guys? Another day in the garage. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, it's raining out. Not really much else I can do about that. So I'm gonna forego some of the yard work. As you can see, the neighbors cut down a big old tree. Well, actually, three trees, and uh, we're still cleaning up that mess, kind of. So can't really do much about that. So I'm gonna go ahead and sit in the garage and do a little bit of work on the uh, the manifold. Uh, I just got this manifold. You saw the last video. It's a, a Kraken T2 manifold. It's awesome, but since I gotta wait for my exhaust anyways, uh, I, and my downpipe, I might as well just go ahead and clean up some of the flashing on this. Uh, I'm gonna try and just clean up the ports a bit, not really doing a full port job on the thing or anything. I don't even really have the tools to do that. Uh, I'm just gonna use this rotary, you know, a Dremel rotary tool, whatever. I've got a small amount of different add-ons and stuff for it. Uh, I'll probably try and use the burrs in there, uh, and then I'll probably switch over to the uh, uh, drum discs, or uh, drum sanders, sorry, that's what they're called, and uh, see how it works. I don't really know. Again, I've never really done this. Uh, you can see here, it's kind of rough around the edges a bit uh, on the inside. I'll just try and blend these ports out a little bit. It's also a lot smaller than my old one. <clears throat> if you look at the port size, uh, comparatively... The port on my old log style manifold is much larger than the one on the Kraken manifold. I don't really think that's gonna, there's gonna be much difference. I think that it's gonna be negated by the fact that this is gonna flow much better. But you never know. So this isn't really a definitive test. There's no science behind this. I'm just gonna give it my best shot and see what, see what turns out. Stick around.
So some things I learned from doing this job. Uh, one, it's a lot easier to slip than I thought it would be. Like when you're when you're in those really tight places, it'll kind of work up on you and, and pop out real easily. It's not too bad with this cast manifold, but something with a little, maybe a little more delicate, uh, you could probably really damage it. This, again, I was using a, a rotary tool with, I started with the uh, coarse sand. It was like a round, round point bit, I guess. And then I moved over to a um, larger one. The smaller one broke. I moved to a larger one, and it worked pretty well, actually, but it doesn't have a long enough shank on it for me to really get back into the crevices and stuff. And then I moved over to the, uh, the little sanding drums, and these things work really well, actually. Uh, you just have to make sure that you don't wear out the tips. It's real easy to screw those tips up and then start wearing into the, uh, the holder piece, which is just a piece of rubber. And uh, so you'd have to flip them and it got kind of annoying, but I went through about four of those. And then to finish it off uh, for finishing, I went to a wire wheel, a very small one, just to kind of polish out the cracks and stuff. That worked pretty well. And then I finished it off with a buffing uh, disc with some buffing compound. Uh, that's probably not necessary exactly. I just wanted to see what it would do with this cast iron. And it, it dulled the surface up pretty well. So I know that it really got down in there and uh, really smoothed over whatever small lines that that uh, wire wheel had made. So there's the finished product. I don't know if you can tell with this camera or not. Uh, GoPros aren't exactly good for this kind of stuff, but it it definitely cleaned up a lot of the flashing on the inside there. But you can see back in the back here, I can't, I couldn't reach any of that stuff. So you could tell the difference in the two. I'm not sure if that's going to be a huge, I don't know, problem in the future. I can't really imagine so. I don't even know how I'd get all the way back there. I'd probably have to have some sort of uh, adhesive or adhesion, not adhesion, what is it? Abrasive uh, liquid or something the, to pump through it. I think some of the Spec Miata guys do that for their intake manifolds. Uh, here you can see it's much more apparent there where the uh, casting is, but I just can't reach far enough back to clean it up real nice. I did get a nice smooth runner here. I mean, this stuff is so smooth. It's almost a mirror finish. Um, and I'm not sure that it's going to be coated with carbon in no time, so it might be off or not. Uh, you can see where I've also kind of um, got the edge here with a more uh, gradual change in, in curvature uh, or convex curve here. Hopefully that'll promote good gas flow. The runners I also polished up pretty nice. Again, you could there's a lot of flashing here on the edge. You can still see some pits and things where I just couldn't get deep enough uh, without some serious time behind it. And this is all just for really my own practice. I kind of smoothed over the edges here and just kind of promoting good clean flow. Uh, I don't think it's really going to do much if, if I can get, you know, 100 or 200 RPM better spool out of it. That, that'd be a win, but I'll actually never know. I never had a, a test on this first. There was no control for it, so who really knows? But that's how you uh, report, and I guess this was a polish. I definitely used a buffing wheel, but it doesn't look as nice as some of the stuff I've seen. Most of the videos I watched were all on... Uh, you know, engine heads and things like that. I never really saw anybody do manifolds. So I don't really know if this is good or not. It, uh, it looks better and it looks like it will flow a little better and it definitely has less jagged uh, or harsh transitions from the uh, intake or from the, the flush mount sides, meaning the T2 footprint and the intake manifold. So hopefully that itself will do something. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Should be about three more weeks before I get all my exhaust in here, uh, max, hopefully. Um, that's when I'll be able to start bolting everything up, and then I'll have to start tuning again a little bit, because this is going to be much different than what I was initially using. So, stay tuned.